One constant of human nature is the need to seek out newer and more exciting forms of entertainment. Before the internet, kids would say, get a buddy to poke a hornet's nest with a stick, or pull that classic, putting a thumbtack on a teacher's chair prank. Once, those activities would stay between friends, maybe become a little bit of local gossip if it was crazy enough. Nowadays, that's still done, but filmed for an audience determined by an algorithm. We love our phones. We can't get enough of social media. There is now an entire generation of people that know nothing but living every day in a digitally dependent world. Everyone and their mother, son, and dog is on social media. Literally. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube all have over a billion estimated monthly active users. Facebook has closer to 3 billion. For reference, we are right around 8 billion people on the entire Earth. China has about 1.4 billion people, India is right under that same number, and the United States has about 335 million people. Based on these estimates, there are more social media users than the entire country of China, which has the largest population of all current nations. However much you may think that is, think bigger, and then bigger. It really is almost incomprehensible. Another thing about us as humans, we like to be liked. We have somehow convinced ourselves that a like on social media is equivalent to being liked in real life. More views equal more likes and more people to like us. Viewers started out happy to see more mundane videos and jokes, but they are now bored of it. They want something new. Maybe something they can't attain. Something they don't have time for. Maybe a glimpse of a life that is drastically different than theirs. The career influencers and online personalities can adapt to this game easily. Those that don't have the same resources, however, must approach the game differently if they want their likes. Usually, it's in the form of participating in a trend. Popular songs can be danced to, products can be unboxed, but if you want the real traction, you have to capture something crazy. Maybe participate in a challenge making the rounds. There are challenges you can do right at home. Not enough? You can steal the stall door right from your school bathroom. Challenges are a long time love of the internet. The tamer ones fell out of love almost as quickly as they appeared. If a challenge is going to do well, it needs to be impressive. It needs to be ridiculous. Maybe even a little dangerous. I explicitly discourage any participation in any of the following challenges. This video was created specifically for entertainment purposes. Any details discussed are simply meant to be explanations of the actions of others, not instructions. Secondly, this video will contain descriptions of injury and death. While I am attempting to not be excessively graphic, some topics may be considered disturbing to some people that are particularly sensitive. The Cinnamon Challenge the honeymoon years of YouTube, we often look back on that first crop of influencers and the things that made them endearing to us. One of the easiest ways for these early influencers to score points with audiences was simple in theory, to make them laugh for a few minutes. It's evident that this was known, there was far from a shortage of skits and pranks. These videos did do well, but pumping them out week after week could get fatiguing for these YouTubers. Enter the cinnamon challenge. The concept is simple enough. You grab a spoon and get a heaping scoop of ground cinnamon. Grab your camera, and you have 60 seconds to swallow that entire spoonful without drinking anything. In its peak popularity in the early 2010s, the challenge was perfect for both the creator and the viewer. The creator records a simple, minimal effort video of them eating a spoon of cinnamon and playing up their reaction, and it was almost guaranteed to be a hit. Because it is such an accessible challenge that literally everyone can do, literally everyone was doing it. Cinnamon is a spice found in a variety of dishes, and the overall population has a generally positive relationship with it, so this was clearly a harmless, fun-filled challenge. Eating a spoonful of powder in any form is not going to be easy without a little something to wash it down. Cinnamon is just that much harder. Cinnamon's appealing flavor and scent comes from cinnamaldehyde, which is also known as a mild irritant. Cinnamon easily coats the mouth and throat, and its consistency makes it harder for saliva to break through a larger amount, such as a spoonful. These factors meant that someone participating in the cinnamon challenge would usually end up gagging on and then subsequently inhaling some cinnamon before exhaling, maybe spitting it out. While this makes for great entertainment, it involves more potential danger than it might be worth. 
In a healthy person, the inhalation of cinnamon can cause breathing issues and even pose a risk for pneumonia. If a person has asthma or other breathing-related conditions, the danger is that much higher. In 2012, U.S. poison control centers had received 139 calls related to, quote, cinnamon misuse by March 28th of that year. Yes, the cinnamon challenge caused enough of a stir that it is referred to as cinnamon misuse. While thankfully there have been no documented deaths related to the cinnamon challenge, a mother named Brianna Radar has a warning for participants. Cinnamon can kill. Brianna's four-year-old son was curiously roaming her kitchen in 2016, as many kids typically do, when he climbed onto a countertop and grabbed a container of ground cinnamon. After he ate a majority of the cinnamon, he choked and then collapsed. When Brianna saw him, she thought he may be having a seizure. Though she rushed him to a hospital, he unfortunately passed away less than an hour and a half later. Yes, her son was only four years old, and much more than a spoonful was consumed, but the point can still be applied. The cinnamon challenge is not worth it. The milk crate challenge. Found in and behind businesses and schools everywhere, milk crates are far from hard to find. In August 2021, social media posters decided we needed yet another dangerous challenge to pass around. This took the form of the Milk Crate Challenge. The Milk Crate Challenge took the form of stacking enough milk crates to serve as ascending and descending stairs. And attempting to successfully climb up and down these stairs, if you can call them that, without causing the structure, again, if you can call it that, to fall. Yes, that does sound like a bad idea, especially considering that most people were doing it on concrete, but we know the internet by now, that did nothing to stop them. Risking your personal safety for clout is nothing new for the internet. The likes earned from the pure entertainment value are just too good for users to pass up. Very quickly, as you may imagine, people were injured after attempting the milk crate challenge. There were your shoulder dislocations and your rotator cuff tears. Then, of course, the concussions, broken ribs, wrists, and various other bones, as well as at least one report of a spinal cord injury. This challenge spread so quickly and caused so much concern that TikTok, the platform that contributed to most of the challenge's virality, began to delete videos of the Milk Crate Challenge, even making it impossible to use the app to search for any videos involving it. Part of the frustration with this challenge, aside from the general disregard for safety it seemed to promote, was the fact that it happened when hospitals were still extremely overwhelmed from COVID-19 patients. They did not need more people stretching medical resources even thinner with preventable injuries, so people were understandably pissed off. Not that there's ever a right time for something like the Milk Crate Challenge, but a pandemic is certainly not the one. The Kylie Lip Challenge Throughout the second half of the 2010s, Instagram ruled the online world. It facilitated the birth of the IG baddie. And who else would be the royalty of that era but the Kardashians? The infamous clan, especially Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian, were the trendsetters that everyone was trying to replicate. That really seemed to be their era of peak power. The BBLs, the lipo, the facial sculpting, the Botox, the breast augmentations, and all of the influencers that scrambled to emulate the Kardashians helped to create the toxicity that some started to associate with Instagram as a platform. When Kylie Jenner first got lip fillers in 2015, everyone took notice. Kylie became more or less known for her lips at the time, even starting a cosmetics company with her Kylie Lip Kits. Then, more and more people and influencers popped up with plumper, suspiciously different lips. While many people did want Kylie's lips, many more began to poke fun at her. Pretty soon, after Kylie Jenner's lips were noticeably different, the Kylie Lip Challenge emerged. Participants would take a shot glass or similar container, put it around their lips, and suck the glass in as hard as they could. After a bit of time, usually after feeling some amount of pain, they'd take the glass off. The intended result was swollen lips reminiscent of the ones that had received fillers. Hopefully, once the video was taken, the swelling would go down after a couple of hours. Some that made the videos weren't so lucky, however. They ended up with bruised skin around their lips, even cut skin. Sometimes the shot glasses would explode, and stitches were needed. Afterwards, one may be left with scarring or leftover pigmentation. The Kylie lip challenge may not have been fatal, but was absolutely injurious and not smart. A few minutes long video making fun of somebody you've never met, resulting in scarring or other damage around your mouth seems ridiculous, but for some, it really happened.
Household Drug Misuse, the NyQuil Chicken Challenge. Apparently jumping off from a tweet in 2017 and several other videos from subsequent years, suddenly the new running gag on TikTok was to cook chicken in NyQuil in just September of 2022. This trend has popped up every few years since that tweet, usually on accounts that have established themselves as posters of satire content. Other than it being disgusting and clearly a joke, people were still really doing it. Thankfully, it was not a lot of people, really just a few trolls hunting for views. Even so, the NyQuil chicken challenge sparked enough concern that the FDA issued a warning urging consumers to not participate in the challenge. They state, quote, boiling a medication can make it much more concentrated and change its properties in other ways. Even if you don't eat the chicken, inhaling the medication's vapors while cooking could cause high levels of the drugs to enter your body. It could also hurt your lungs, end quote. The thing about this challenge is that it seems that people had at least some sense as I wasn't able to find any instances of injuries or hospitalizations related to the NyQuil chicken challenge. While these NyQuil chicken videos we see every so often seem like a cut and clear case of shit posting, maybe being harmless so long as it isn't inhaled, other over-the-counter drugs misused for online points might be much more dangerous. Benadryl whether you have seasonal allergies, react to pet dander, or maybe have more intense reactions like rashes or hives, you are likely to have at least some experience with the antihistamine known as Benadryl. While it often causes fatigue as a side effect, many continue to use it for its accessibility and its strong reputation for efficacy. It is great that we can have drugs like this available at every corner store. Our issue arises with the fact that if something can be abused, people will probably find that way to abuse it. Benadryl, for the good it can do, can also be used to create a delirious type of high in the people that overdose on it. During its first popularity in 2020, the Benadryl Challenge encouraged teenagers to intentionally overdose on Benadryl in hopes of tripping on it. This challenge, in contrast to the NyQuil Chicken Challenge, did result in some hospitalizations and at least two documented deaths of teenagers. One was a 15-year-old girl in Oklahoma in August of 2020, and in this past April of 2023, there was a 13-year-old boy in Ohio that passed away after participating in the Benadryl Challenge, as it was resurging in popularity at the time. The FDA released a statement hoping to increase awareness, opening with the paragraph, quote, The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, is warning that taking higher than recommended doses of the common over-the-counter, OTC, allergy medicine, diphenhydramine, Benadryl, can lead to serious heart problems, seizures, coma, or even death. We are aware of the news reports of teenagers ending up in emergency rooms or dying after participating in the Benadryl challenge, encouraged in videos posted on the social media application TikTok." End quote. The knowledge that just because something is common and familiar doesn't mean that it is automatically harmless is something we would hope our children don't learn the hard way. Trends like the Benadryl challenge show us that we need to reinforce the idea that household chemicals and drugs cannot be dealt with carelessly. Maybe we are getting better with that overall, but unfortunately, we can't just leave our worries about children ingesting harmful substances at medications and cleaners. There are foods that might spell the death of an unsuspecting teenager, even if they know of the dangers of sanitizers and pills. Nutmeg. Foods can be deadly. Of course, we all know that. There are allergies and food poisonings and diseases that could get you at any time. There are kids that have died after the over-ingestion of salt. A mother died when she drank too much water for a radio contest. In fact, health nuts are still being hospitalized because they are over-drinking their water as some kind of health hack. As we have seen with the Benadryl challenge, teens that haven't fully developed their reasoning skills yet might justify misusing everyday items because they are just so familiar. If someone was hesitant to join the Benadryl challenge, they might just be fooled by the nutmeg challenge. Their goals are pretty similar, ingest a large amount to achieve some sort of high. Right now, please let me be clear and reiterate, I am not condoning this challenge. It is meant to be explanatory. Do not do this. Thank you. Just in case. Nutmeg, when ingested in much larger amounts than required for recipes, can have hallucinogenic effects. The American College of Emergency Physicians states that the main psychoactive element of nutmeg, myristicin, can metabolize into chemical structures similar to MDMA in instances where it is ingested in significant portions. Because nutmeg is sold as a spice and not meant to be used as any sort of drug with 
little restriction, if any. The effects of any high achieve could go wrong very easily. If a participant is lucky with their side effects, they might get away with only nausea, stomach pain, vomiting, or severe dry mouth. The less fortunate might be finding themselves extremely confused along with their hallucinations, potentially even experiencing seizures or a concerningly rapid heart rate. It may even take at least a day for these effects to wear off. It is also worth noting that myristicin is also known as an insecticide and potential neurotoxin. Unfortunately, many participating in the nutmeg challenge wouldn't have looked that far into it. Thankfully, no deaths have been directly attributed to the nutmeg challenge since its peak popularity in 2020, but it is still very, very possible to die from a nutmeg overdose. Once again, familiarity never automatically means safety, but some still seem unable to grasp that as a crucial fact of life. Anything, whether from the spice cabinet or the bathroom shelf, can be a shockingly effective killer. The Condom Challenge condoms. As an easy form of contraception that generally works, they are everywhere and everyone knows about them. Most adults are comfortable enough with the existence of condoms, but to the tweens and teens that are starting to be taught what is hopefully an accurate and useful sexual education, oh my god, condoms are hilarious. You put it on a banana, and it represents, and it's stretchy, and I can get it anywhere. Maybe they'll start by making condom balloons. Look how funny. Wait, some people are snorting condoms for some hits on YouTube? Let's get on that. Around 2013, that was a real thing that was happening. Snorting a condom up through the nose and pulling it out through the mouth. Immediately, that does sound very painful. Not only painful, but hazardous. You could choke on it. It could get stuck along the way. You could damage parts of your nasal cavity and sinuses. You could end up with an infection because of the damage caused. Luckily, and almost unbelievably, there are no reported serious injuries or deaths with this version of the condom challenge. However, there is another one and it has been fatal. Showing up in 2015, the newer condom challenge involves filling a condom up with a large amount of water with the intention of dropping it on the head of your friend. Because condoms are much more durable and stretchy than your typical water balloon, the balloon might bounce around the person's face. That was usually the desired effect. It might stick for a minute, temporarily preserving the hilariously squished expression the person was making. Funny videos? Absolutely. Suffocation danger? off the charts. The warning for this particular challenge could be similar to those don't leave a baby alone with an empty plastic bag warning, but instead, even multiple people might not be able to save the victim from suffocation in time. In November 2015, a 17-year-old girl from Las Vegas reportedly passed away because her friends were unable to remove the condom from her head before she lost consciousness. Not only was the life of that girl lost, but her friends must carry that trauma with them for the rest of their lives. One friend stated, quote, I will never forgive myself." End quote. Reports like this are a haunting reminder that a fleeting moment can be the one that changes your life for the worse. The Penny Outlet Challenge For those that don't have a reasonably deep-seated fear of electrocution, the Penny Outlet Challenge sounds like a great idea. It's easy. Plug a charging block partway into an outlet and drop a penny into the gap. Really, the only payoff seems to be seeing how big of a spark you can get. It doesn't seem like it would be worth it, even if it was completely safe. Electricity is not something to taunt. A simple reaction, like a penny touching an electric power source, can be catastrophic. In January 2020, two 15-year-old boys in Plymouth, Massachusetts, shorted an electrical outlet at their school. Later that week, a student in Westford, Massachusetts, ignited an outlet, creating enough smoke to activate fire alarms. Then, a mother in Holden, Massachusetts, reported that her child scorched an electrical outlet in their home around the same time. Within the same couple of weeks, Colorado Springs, Colorado fire officials reported an incident involving a child trying the penny outlet challenge at their local middle school. Then, the same thing happened at a Tacoma, Washington middle school. Even with no serious injuries or deaths reported, if the penny outlet challenge were to go wrong enough, a large portion of a building's electrical system could be significantly damaged. Worse, a hazardous electrical fire could ignite. The idea of aggravating an electrical beast, maybe even catching an arson charge, all for a short video that will be forgotten almost instantly just isn't super enticing. Maybe we should just let the kids play their video games sometimes, I don't know. The Bird Box Challenge This segment discusses suicide and self-harm. Skip to the following timecode if you do not wish to see this part.
From the mid to late 2010s, Netflix had it made. It was the undefeated ruler of streaming, having not yet been challenged by the studios it housed content for. They had found their ideal audience, obsessive teenagers and young adults that would lap up any Netflix original from the streamers at disgustingly powerful hands. By the time the movie adaptation of the apocalyptic thriller Bird Box was released on the platform, just about everything that Netflix employed a big name or two in was a guaranteed hit. The 2018 film starred recognizable actors like Sandra Bullock, Trevante Rhodes, and Sarah Paulson, showing that Netflix had no intentions of ending their quest to legitimize themselves as a competitor in scripted entertainment. Side note, Machine Gun Kelly had a small part in Bird Box. He needs to pick an industry to terrorize. In the world of Bird Box, an invisible force causes anyone that lays eyes on it to commit suicide. The surviving characters find that if they need to travel anywhere, they must be completely blindfolded the entire time that they are not in a place that has all views of the outside covered. In an effort to promote this movie, Netflix Australia sent a pair of walkie-talkies, a blindfold, a bicycle bell, fishing line, and chocolate pop-tarts inside a pelican case to four Australian streamers, challenging them to play their favorite game while blindfolded. With these objects related to Bird Box, the streamers Geek GG, Artemis, Chingjulish, and Pig accepted Netflix's challenge and played for their viewers. The promotion worked, but audiences quickly decided that blindfolded gaming was not enough. They wanted to do the Bird Box challenge in the real world. Because social media users were extremely fond of Netflix at the time, and because viral challenges are always around, the Bird Box challenge exploded. Some people would try to do a few things around their houses while blindfolded. Unfortunately, as you might expect, not everybody played it safe. In the ever-intensifying battle for internet clout, everyone was trying to one-up each other. Morgan, Adams, and a friend had others take them around town so that they could attempt to walk around public areas completely blindfolded. One of the more concerning videos involved none other than Jake Paul, apparently driving blindfolded. Thankfully only hitting objects like trash cans in his recklessness. Later on in the video, he walks straight into traffic. Of course, with eyes still completely covered. Paul's audience was made up of impressionable young kids and teenagers at the time, doubling the irresponsibility of his actions. Bird Box was released on December 14th, 2018, and by January 2nd, 2019, the challenge was already getting so out of control that Netflix had to tweet. Quote, can't believe I have to say this, but please do not hurt yourselves with this bird box challenge. We don't know how this started, and we appreciate the love, but boy and girl, sidebar who are characters from the movie, unsidebar, have just one wish for 2019, and it is that you not end up in the hospital due to memes. End quote. Still, a tweet was not enough. Less than a week later, on January 7th, 2019, a 17-year-old girl crashed a pickup truck near the interstate in Utah while doing the bird box challenge. She apparently pulled her beanie over her head, lost control, and hit another car as well as a light pole. Thankfully, no major injuries were reported in this accident. The report that she pulled her beanie over her head is a great reminder that impulsivity is integral to the success of challenges like this. Most participants are not the big social media stars. They are the fans that suddenly say, let's do this, and pull out their phones. The light bulb idea can be the most dangerous one. The Tide Pod Challenge. Of every dumb challenge, every game that could get you killed, the Tide Pod Challenge might just be the most infamous. You know, kids eating laundry detergent is not a new problem. Kids will eat anything they're not supposed to, that's a given. Still, concern was renewed about kids ingesting laundry soap when Tide Pods were introduced to the market in 2012. They are brightly colored, shiny, squishy, all characteristics that young kids or even mentally incapacitated adults, such as those with dementia, might mistake for candy. Tide Pods and many of their competitors still look somewhat like candy today. When Tide Pods are consumed, someone may experience nausea or vomiting, maybe diarrhea. Less commonly, but more terrifyingly, burns or ulcers might develop anywhere from the mouth to further down the pharynx and esophagus. Worse, there is a potential for seizures or damage to the kidneys or respiratory system if things go disastrously bad. There are even reports of some victims needing to be placed onto ventilators. Throughout the early 2010s, these concerns proved themselves valid. In 2012 and 2013, the years directly after the introduction of Tide Pods to the U.S. market, the Center for Injury Research and Policy reported that 17,000 calls concerning laundry pod exposure to children under six 
were made to poison control centers across the nation. That is around one call an hour, including ingestion, skin exposure, or eye injury incidents. In the same two years, the Journal of Pediatrics found that, on average, laundry pods sent one child a day to hospitals. Procter & Gamble responded by changing the Tide Pod containers to a solid orange rather than transparent, but that did not address the real problem. Laundry pod poisonings kept on happening, but usually only to mentally vulnerable populations. Exposures hadn't been as much of an issue for teenagers until January of 2018, when teenage exposure numbers more than doubled from January of 2017. Suddenly, in late 2017, Tide Pods had become a huge meme. Now, the memes of that time period were different. For one thing, it didn't feel as if the word meme was overused and obnoxious. The typical fake tweet format that Instagram content farms are perpetually attached to hadn't yet been beaten to death. Before everyone was on TikTok, viral jokes seemed to be more evenly spread throughout other platforms we still regularly use today, like Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Tumblr first. While Tide Pods were somewhat of a joking subject here and there in the years after their release, 2017 is when the buildup accelerated. Reddit and Tumblr memes were popping up, but it was all in good fun. No one would actually eat the Tide Pods. It was well understood that this was a joke. We were all joking. Until we weren't. By January 2018, some people saw the opportunity and seized it, recording videos of themselves genuinely eating Tide Pods, often posting them to YouTube. These videos obviously very quickly got restricted or removed, and an absolute media frenzy ensued. It was well beyond a meme at that point, it was a genuine public health concern, and a fantastic cash cow for reactionaries that were desperate for something new to be mad about. It became a point of contention between people of all walks of life, as they clashed on their different understandings of the joke turned risky challenge. My personal point of view is that the Tide Pod fiasco set back conversations between older and younger generations relating to the internet very significantly. It still seems like it is brought up as an excuse to call entire age groups stupid and brush them off. It is a favorite kids these days example that they feel they can use as an excuse to ignore more pressing issues with the internet that anyone might be susceptible to. Now let's talk just a little bit more about this idea of generational misunderstandings. The Boat Challenge Dangerous challenges are not excluded from mis- and disinformation campaigns. There is a boat challenge that involves people jumping off a speeding boat. Many outlets that were usually known to be reputable were reporting four Alabama deaths in relation to this challenge. Social media users spread that idea even further. But as it turns out, this was an instance of misinformation fueling hysteria. There were water-related deaths, but none of them were attributed to the boat challenge or any social media challenges at all. It's easier to pile onto a target that is easier or more enticing to comprehend than reality. We all like to feel like we know better or we're in on a secret. If these deaths had been the result of a TikTok challenge, it would have been great fuel for certain people's narrative that younger generations are complete idiots. Of course we have our idiots, but no more than any other generation. It seems like younger generations are more stupid because we have social media and the internet to make these idiots more visible than ever before. The internet is rife with a jumping to conclusions mindset that is setting us back. How do we even claw our way out of it? I don't know, but I hope that eventually more of us become at least slightly more aware of it. No one is perfect. Not even the best of news sources are going to be 100% accurate 100% of the time. I very well understand that it can be exhausting to double check every claim or story, but it really helps us in the long term to question ideas that might seem a little off. This concept of verification sticks out to me because every time I personally slack on it, it bites me in the ass. This unfortunately doesn't happen to everyone it should happen to, but considering that no one person or publication can be right about everything, it's good to double check. There is nothing wrong with having fun. There's nothing wrong with participating in most trends. Our issue is we often disregard our collective common sense when we see others doing something that may be unsafe. Seeing someone do something before we do tends to calm our nerves, but sometimes it really, really shouldn't. It could land you in the hospital, it could kill you. So next time you're trying to figure out how you'll get a few likes, or maybe horse around with your friends, ask, 
Can this easily go wrong? How bad would it be if this goes wrong? I don't want to sound like your mother, but that whole if your friend jumped off a bridge, would you do it too? Thing unfortunately is a good point, even if it gets used in reference to the wrong scenarios a lot of the time. It really is just fine to sit something out if it may not seem safe. It's not just kids doing these challenges, there are plenty of examples involving adults. The instances of children and teenagers participating could be thought to be more frequent because of our collective bias towards children and young people. The young are always treated as if they are as stupid as a human could be. Everyone does stupid things in adolescence, but most get along fine enough. Yes, teenagers are still learning risk evaluation and impulse control, but they ignore a lot of warnings because of how patronizing they seem. I don't have all the answers, I'm still a young adult. What I would suggest to worried parents or mentors, as someone that's still in that phase of life, is to treat young people as humans. We are not pets that you can train to do specific tricks until we die. We want to be spoken to as equals, not talked down to. We would get much further if we spoke to everybody like that. I know that's very wishful thinking, but I still want to say it. All of these challenges and internet dares can seem terrifying. Still, there's no need to helicopter parent your typical kid. We have to let them live. It's not a perfect method by any means, but generally the more open and less restrictive a parent is with a kid, within reason of course, generally the more trusting a kid will be of their parent. Explanation before dismissal is something that is just not done enough. If that were to happen more, maybe a kid would be more willing to question something before they participate in a future activity that may end up being harmful or dangerous. All in all, after this, my brain has liquefied and leaked out of my face. Once a challenge reaches virality, it never really goes away. Someone remembering it might participate in a dangerous dare from years past at any time. Sometimes challenges experience a full resurgence, almost like an item of clothing coming back in style. We are all human. We all get caught up in the tantalizing winds of the popular, but we still have the ability to second guess, to sit this one out. It always has been, and always will be, a question of whether we are willing to be the one that puts themselves in danger for the enjoyment of strangers. We will keep asking ourselves that question until we cannot anymore, one way or the other.